In the previous segment, we looked at some basic TBI map patterns, as well as a pre-post map and CPT tests showing the efficacy of neurofeedback with TBI. Now I'd like to discuss the further complications that arise from TBI. It has been noted in recent research that an increase in tau proteins is regularly correlated with TBI. These proteins interfere with microtubule activities and reduce neural stability. The tau proteins are associated with dementias and loss of neural function. In this slide, you can see an example of healthy tissue on the left compared to tissue with developing tau protein on the right. Post-mortem studies of the brains of NFL players who had suffered neurodegenerative disease revealed tau levels that were significantly higher than normal. Researchers were able to trace the source back to the effects of multiple concussive and subconcussive events. These TBI events in sports, as in other accidents, frequently involves a dual process of injury to the brain. The initial blow results in injury to the region of impact, but also results in the displacement of the brain in the skull such that it compresses against the skull region opposite to the site of the blow. This process is known as coup and contra-coup. Thus, a primary and secondary impact emerge from a single blow. The gray and white matter of the brain contain different levels of water content and have different densities. Consequently, they move at different velocities, which results in shearing or tearing of axons at the junction where gray and white matter come together. This axonal shearing does not always show up in standard medical imaging but manifests typically as elevated delta in QEG analysis. Sometimes the shearing results in axonal death, and other times it alters axonal conduction velocity and network activity. The symptoms can often be unusual, sometimes subtle, and difficult for clients to articulate. When a region of the brain is traumatized in the acute stage, typically other regions, especially from the contralateral side, invade and inhibit the damaged regions to reduce glutaminergic activity that can escalate oxidative stress. The long-term consequences is that these areas can go offline and heal, but must activate and come back online to fight off transcolossal inhibitory mechanisms, which can eventually become counterproductive. Computerized models of lesions help to demonstrate this process in more detail. In section B of the image, the middle head map shows a lesion in the form of a green cross on the left side. The blue lines represent diminished intrahemispheric connections resulting from the lesion as networks go offline for repair. The red lines from the contralateral hemisphere indicate increased connectivity as these networks take inhibitory control over the injured areas and also assist in processing. Decades of research indicate that many kinds of trauma result in abnormal delta. Damage resulting in a disconnect of the brain stem and the frontal cortical regions result in elevated delta, as does white matter damage in general. Inflammatory oxidative stress results in cell edema, necrosis, and apoptosis that reduces acetylcholine output. Similar patterns emerge from toxic encephalopathies and viral and bacterial inflammation as well. In this client case, imaging indicates left frontal dorsal lateral damage from a severe TBI. QEEG analysis showed significantly elevated delta and theta in this region, but training results from this region were discouraging. Damage to one area may have a greater or lesser effect on other areas, depending on the degree of participation in the entire processing network. Its impact may be further affected by available alternate routes of processing. A Loretta analysis of this case revealed a more dysregulated area in the posterior temporal parietal junction around BA area 22. This upstream region appeared to be exerting excessive inhibitory control over the frontal region. Training in this region produced a greater impact on the client's function. Neurocognitive testing indicated the entire verbal memory network in particular was affected. Training resulted in a transition from single word communication to full sentences within two weeks.